15 of the best pieces of business advice. Welcome, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. It's great to have you back, especially today where we're going after such an incredible topic. You're here because you're either A, running a business, or B, thinking about starting one. In order to help our community, we went through hundreds of books, hundreds of interviews with millionaires and billionaires, as well as our own personal experience. We bundled everything together in this straight-to-the-point list. It's like we're taking you through the best parts of business school, but from the comfort of your own home. Here are the 15 best pieces of business advice anyone could ever give you. Number one, ideas are worthless without execution. Nobody cares you have a million dollar idea. You know why? Everybody has ideas because ideas are free or super cheap. You can walk down the street, stop any person, and ask them for a business idea, and they'll be able to throw a couple at you. The biggest businesses in the world right now were not the ones to come up with an original idea, but were the ones to be able to execute it the best. See Google as a search engine, Facebook as a social network, and even Apple. They just better execute on existing technology than anybody else. A great idea with poor execution will fail, while a pretty basic idea with great execution will turn into a valuable business. Starbucks makes coffee. Think about it in terms of how complex an idea that is. Give people coffee. Execution is different. Ideas aren't worth that much. As a rule of thumb, an idea is worth a million dollars only after it's made a million dollars. Take this with you when you go. Number two, launch at 80%. Don't wait for perfection. Some people wait too long because they want to get everything right, or at least what they assume is their version of right. This kills more businesses than anything else. Why? People never launch. You don't need a perfect logo. You don't need the most beautiful website. You don't need all the branded mugs. All you need is a product and a way to get money out of people who want said product. Everything else is just a decoration. Getting your product or service out there teaches you more about what's actually important than what you believe matters. So don't wait. Number three, give before you take. In the age of the internet, business has changed. People need to know who you are and what you can bring to the table. Back in the day, it was free samples at the supermarket. Now it's shifted to social media accounts. This idea of giving first and taking second has become a fundamental pillar for anyone starting a business in the 21st century. This has been the model we've used to grow our own business. Mind Mastery was such an incredible success because people know the quality of our free content. The moment we decided to create a premium piece of content, it was a no-brainer for most of you. When you provide value first, people feel the need to return the favor. Number four, it's five times more expensive to acquire a new customer than to keep an existing one. To be precise, studies show that it's somewhere between five to twenty-five times more expensive to get a new customer. This is what the smartest MBA students are learning, so pay close attention. Increasing customer retention rates by five percent increases profits by twenty-five percent to ninety-five percent. Yeah. Keeping the right customer is super valuable. This is why big brands are building ecosystems around their products, which are getting harder and harder to leave. It makes them a ton of money. If you already have a business, go out of your way to make sure your existing customers are loving the relationship they have with you. It pays off big time in the long run. Number five: Reinvest everything in the beginning. If you're just starting out, the temptation is high to enjoy the spoils of your work, but don't do it. Instead, make sure the business actually has a chance of surviving in the long run. Take money coming in and secure your position. That's when you begin to polish what you have. Business school teaches you you should reinvest half of your profits. Real life business experience has taught us you should go beyond that. Why? It accelerates growth. It teaches you a lot more about your own business. It allows you to hire out your weaknesses. It brings in better talent, and it dramatically increases the chances of long-term survival. 
Every successful business we know has been aggressively reinvesting everything until they got to a position where they could afford to take some money out, us included. Long-term survival is more important than showing off how successful you are. Number six, a business that's not growing is dying. There are two states in which a business should find itself at some point in time. The first one is expanding into the marketplace. The second one is fortifying the share it's already garnered. If your business isn't in either of these two, you're in big trouble. The thing that worries us most when looking at other businesses is when they begin to flatline. For most people, this should be a sign of maturity, but it isn't. Because while you're busy doing business as usual, your competitors are pushing harder than ever, trying to take it all away from you. Technology is changing. Your customers are evolving. There's no such thing as a passive business. It all requires attention, management, and a strong ability to creatively add value to what already exists. Number seven, don't give up when things get hard. Get creative instead. Stop thinking about difficult times as the end of the world because they're not. Instead, think of them as the marketplace testing your ability to solve this puzzle it threw at you. This is how the business world differentiates between those who really have what it takes and those who are just trying to look busy. Every difficulty you face, we assure you, other people have faced them as well. Some have passed the test; others have not. Everything you built started as a concept in that mind of yours, and we strongly believe if you look hard enough in there, you'll find the answer to this as well. In order to keep surviving, you have to be able to use your mind to come up with creative answers. Number eight: Don't spend any money until you're making money. If only we had a Super Bowl commercial, then people would learn about our product and the business would be successful. So many beginner entrepreneurs make this mistake. They believe throwing more money at marketing would solve all their problems. But here's the thing: marketing doesn't save a shitty product or service. But you know what does have an impact? Sweat equity. Do the damn work yourself. Early on, you don't have money, but you do have something way more valuable: time. So many beginner entrepreneurs undervalue time because they always had it in abundance. Successful businesses grow because people convert time into money and then use that money to buy more time, and the cycle continues. Once you've done this enough, you should have a stable business on your hands. That's when you finally evolve into this next point. Number nine: Stop selling your time. Sell a product. See, this is why you should watch the video in full, not just read the list in the comment section. Once you figure out how to monetize your time, you fall quickly into a trapped box. Your time is limited. Even if you worked nonstop, you still couldn't spend more than 24 hours in a day. That's why you need to level up and develop a scalable product or service. Scalable means it can go beyond what you're able to do at your maximum capacity, and the scales can grow as the business evolves. Instead of weaving baskets by hand and having to sell them one by one, work on creating a machine that weaves the baskets for you, so you can focus solely on the selling part. Your mindset should be: How can I solve this problem now, so I don't have to worry about it in the future? Number ten: Finish what you start. How many of you begin projects but end up abandoning them halfway through? Good. If you related to that, please know you probably don't have what it takes. Sorry to be so blunt about it. Business is a super competitive area with a very high chance of failure. Self-discipline and the ability to focus on your work are a major requirement, not only in business but in living a successful life as well. You need to prove to yourself that you can keep your word, that you will do as you say. People are inspired by this. They will follow you and will build momentum. A small win is strong enough to push for a medium one. Keep it up for long enough, and you'll see how reality is changing. As a golden rule in business, if you say you're going to do something, do not stop until it's done. Number eleven. Know your numbers. We love numbers. Numbers don't lie. They don't care about your feelings or your plans or goals. If the numbers say you're losing money, then you're losing money. They are the most honest representation of your work. If you're doing a good job, the numbers will be good. And guess what? 
The more you understand your numbers, the better job you can do. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. You are the CEO of this business for a reason. If you don't understand what's happening and where you're going, the business will spiral out of control. Number 12. Your clients are your marketing plan. There is nothing stronger than satisfied customers. Your job, no matter what you do, is to create value for people, and in exchange for it, they will give you money. If you do a really good job, people will remember it. They'll recommend you to their friends and will buy again. The quote "the customer is king" has a bad connotation because of terrible customers faced with terrible service. This is what we mean when we talk about organic growth. Sure, marketing can make things move quicker, but unless your customer loves what you're offering, you'll end up with just more terrible customers. Figure out how to exceed expectations efficiently, and you're good to go. Number thirteen. Do one thing every day that moves the needle. As an entrepreneur, the business is in your hands. Ask yourself, what can I do today that will benefit the business in the long term, and then do it, and do it again tomorrow and the day after that. This is a different way of thinking than most people do. While the average person is thinking, "How do I solve this problem for now?" As an entrepreneur, you think, "How do I solve this problem forever?" It's the fish versus teaching you how to fish metaphor only applied to yourself and your business. Once figured out, you bring in an employee and teach them how to fish for you. Your ability to make strategic decisions in the present that have a continuous ripple effect in the future is what will make or break your business. Number fourteen. Keep learning by studying other successful businesses. A big mistake many entrepreneurs make is that at some point they stop learning, they stop reading, they stop going to events, they stop studying others. This leaves them vulnerable to others who still have the hunger they're missing. One of the best things you can do is to constantly observe and analyze why other businesses are succeeding, even if they're in different industries than you. Fundamentally, selling stocks, cutting hair, and selling ice cream is the same business, just with different price tags. Observe how they organize themselves. Find the little things they do right that your business can do as well. If you're really good at it, you can adapt and improve on them to fit your own market. This is a big reason why we keep recommending so many books and audiobooks on this channel. You need to keep yourself in the game. Number fifteen. Make sure you're passionate about what you do. The last item on this list might sound like rainbows and sunshine, but we assure you it's not. You're likely going to do this business of yours for the next five to ten, maybe even twenty years if you're lucky. There will come a time when things get super difficult or repetitive, or you burn out, and you'll still be required to perform. Nobody in their right mind would choose to put up with this unless they were genuinely passionate about what they're doing. If everything objective is the same, the person who's more passionate will win simply through the desire to outlast everyone else.